Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about working with this uh, Elite Steel Stump Remover. Okay, now they call it a stump remover. That's really not a good name for it because although maybe you can remove small stumps or maybe dig up small trees, uh, it's it's really you know it's a lot. If you're going to go to a big stump that has like wide roots, this is really not the best tool, right? You really want a uh, uh, a mini excavator for that. Okay, but. Uh, this is really good for digging, okay? So you can see how I'm digging into this area over here. Basically, I'm mining it for dirt. I'm taking it, you know, someplace else. Uh, so this thing has these nice teeth over here, uh, which are really good for breaking uh, hard dirt, okay? So that dirt's probably been sitting there for, like, I don't know, millions of years, okay? And, and I'm digging into it. Um, so uh, I'm going to demonstrate how I've been working with this. Now, if you look at this uh, trench over here, I mostly dug this out with a uh, uh, a large excavator that I had rented. It was like 30, 36,000 pounds. But I used this tractor, this... Uh, um, Actually, I was using the L3800 at the time. I now have it at a different property. Uh, right now, I'm working with the L3901. But uh, I did use uh, th these two machines to basically, uh, you know, kind of finish it off, right? So, so I, I use this machine for a lot of the finishing work. Uh, and that's pretty good because I found with the large excavator, first of all, it was rented. Um, and a lot of times, you, know, you can only hold on to a rented machine for so long because that gets really expensive. You know, this machine here I own, and I have the luxury of, you know, basically working on this for a couple of hours, coming back the next day, looking at, you know, what I've done and seeing what I want to do from there, okay? Um, so what you, I'm going to put, put it on the, on the bipod, and I'm going to talk to you guys. Now, this, uh, this bucket over here, uh, this weighs about 175 pounds, okay? At the time I bought it, it was something like... $550. Uh, they do have a much heavier one, one that weighs like something like 350 pounds. You don't want that, uh, for, you know, you, you don't want like a 500 pound bucket or th even a 300 pound bucket on a machine that only has like a lifting capacity of like about a thousand pounds. Uh, this one over here is pretty ideal uh, because at 175 pounds, you know, I can, I, you know, I can load up, completely load this up in over here and, you know, I, and I can, I can comfortably work. Um, this machine, this the, the hydraulics on this machine are not strong enough to damage this bucket, okay? So you don't have to go to the more expensive bucket. The one that weighs 175 pounds uh, is going to work w really well. You can even look at the... This is, I've had this for about two years now, and I've done lots of work with it, and it's 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 holding up really well, okay? So that's Elite Steel. Like I said, when I got it, it was like $550. Uh, now it's, I think, uh, cl close to $1,000 with the, with the Biden inflation and all. Um, so, yeah, uh, let me put the camera on the bipod. I'm going to give you guys a little... Uh, brief uh, talk to you guys about how I'm working with this. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is I've got definitely got some good counterweight in the back. Okay, so there's a thousand pounds back here. Uh, so here's the thing: what the what the counterweights are doing here, because I'm not like lifting a whole lot of heavy weight. Like I am filling up the bucket, but what this really does is it gives these these tires back here a uh, good a lot extra traction, right? So I can push into that dirt uh, without spinning my wheels. Okay, so that's what this counterweight here is really helpful for. Now these wheels are also filled with fluid, uh, so each tire, you know, uh, with the with the fluid in it weighs about 600 pounds, and then I, you know, so you got like something like 1200 pounds and tires in the back and then you've got a thousand pounds of counterweight okay so that's going to give me a lot of good traction now one of the things i'm trying not to do is spin my wheels because i really don't want to uh, dig a hole over here where i'm working okay so that's a pretty big concern let me get this on this uh tripod here hold on me Okay, so I got it mounted on the tripod. So um, my goal here is I want to I'm going to keep this in the medium gear. I don't want to put it in the low gear because that's uh, uh, it's more likely I'm going to spin my wheels and, and, and break the ground over here. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to keep it in the medium gear. So if I'm pushing too hard into the dirt, the machine's just going to stop rather than start spinning its wheels. Okay. Uh, so and also you know because I'm going to be able to you know lift up the dirt and basically move out of here and get the dirt to a different location. So one of the questions, uh, one of the issues that comes up, is this the best tool to use for this job, right? Of digging into this pile of dirt over here and moving the dirt out of here, okay? Is it the best tool? Uh, I kind of think it is. 
because first of all, I need a machine that's small enough to get in here. Okay. Uh, now, if I had a backhoe on the back of this machine, I don't think that would work so good for me because here's the thing. I got to back up into this with the backhoe, dig it. Okay. Uh, then I got to, because I got to put down the stabilizers, dig for a little bit then lift up the stabilizers. I can't turn the machine around over here, so I gotta take the machine out, then bring it back in, pick up, get it out, you know, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not able to dig and move, whereas what this allows me to do is, it allows me to break up the dirt, dig it, uh, then immediately scoop it up and get it out of here. Uh, I don't have to worry about trying to turn the machine around, you know, from, from the backhoe side to the front loader side, okay? so. That's one of the reasons why uh, I have found this to be extremely useful. In general, with backhoes, I have found is if you if you need backhoes are great if you go, if you need to dig like a hole like this that's going to go deep uh, in a very small confined area. Okay, if you're going to be like digging and moving, you want to be working with something that you know you can you can dig and move like uh, like with the excavator you you're digging and moving right you're not like flipping around back and forth or, or the machine itself can, can can rotate um the problem with the excavator is it digs really well but it's not so good for moving the dirt out so what ideally right would if i had a mini excavator here what i would do is i'd situate the excavator here i would dig flip the arm around drop it right and then i would have somebody else on the machine come in scoop up the dirt and get out of here so that's a two-person job with two machines right where i'm digging coming around dropping next guy comes in scoops up and you can keep the job working moving along really quick like that i i i don't have two machines and i don't have a second person uh so for this situation this is actually working a lot better for me right because uh, i can use one machine i can come in dig and scoop and get this thing out, get the dirt out pretty efficiently. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna, um, let me point the camera more towards the dirt so you guys can see how I'm gonna work with this. Um, so again, you're gonna see me using the teeth to slowly break up the dirt, okay? Loosen it up. Uh, you're gonna see me pop the bucket a little bit. So I'm gonna break it, pop it back. I'm gonna flip the dirt into the bucket, dig some more, flip the dirt back into the bucket. Right, so, so the flipping action that you're going to see is me moving the dirt back into the bucket. Uh, and that's how I'm going to be able to fill it up. Okay, so let's start this. All right, so you see how I was able to do that, use those teeth to break up the dirt, fill up the bucket, and then from here, I'm, I'm ready to just, you know, just back out and take the dirt to wherever I need to go. Uh, I don't have to worry about bringing up stabilizers, really, you know, turning the machine around to, you know, get from one side of the machine to the other side. I can just back out and just, just, just you know, get the dirt where I wanted it to go. So I think this is a, an extremely useful tool if you've got a front loader, particularly with a quick attach. Okay, uh, for the less than a thousand dollars that you're gonna pay for this, you're going to get a lot of utility out of this, right? Uh, this is going to, you know, I, I, again, unless you're digging out like I don't know, like a um, a deep, narrow hole 
or, or, or specifically removing lots of stumps where you need to dig like narrow and deep. Uh, this is probably what's going to be the most useful for most tractor owners. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Drop some comments below and I'll, try, I'll talk to you all soon. Hey everyone, I also want to demonstrate a different way that I use it. I will also angle the bucket down, not, not completely all the way down, but a little bit down, and also use it to, to basically dig uh, the same way that you would, let's say, with a, with, with, with a backhoe. Okay, so I use it to also dig like that. So I play it both ways, because sometimes I'm, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm pushing into it, I get to a certain point and I'm like, okay, uh, there's a, I might run into a rock or something that's not moving, or some really hard ground. But then I'll play it from a different angle. I'll angle it down, and I'm basically pulling it out like that, and that also allows me to, uh, to, to, to move this along fast. The other thing worth noting is that uh, this bucket here is actually going to hold more dirt when I fill it up uh, than the typical small bucket of a mini excavator. Okay, so because of that, I'm I, I'm able to to get dirt out of here a lot faster than if I was just using a mini excavator and then you know trying to figure out you know let's say if you just if you if you just have a mini excavator and you're trying to move dirt from one side to way over on the other side with a bucket that's going to take you forever because the bucket can only hold so much now the other thing also worth noting is at some point i will also switch out the bucket and put my regular uh my, my regular i don't know a 66 inch bucket uh because that's also going to give me a different uh it's allowing me to gonna to hit this dirt differently because with this I basically, if you see, I'm, I'm basically kind of digging into the middle. Um, well, at some point, I'm going to come in with, with my regular bucket, and what's going to happen is I'm going to use the edges, right, the corners, the side corners of that bucket to also to, to dig in there. So, uh, so I, basically, I do go back and forth between the, the stump bucket and my regular bucket, um, you know, to, to, to move this as, along as fast as possible. So you guys can check out. Uh, how I'm going to be working this right now where I'm scooping down. Okay, so you can see how I was able to fill up the bucket. So I, I work this from both directions. Sometimes I push into it, right? And then if I find that, hey, I'm um, not being as productive, I'll turn it down and I'll pull out. The one thing you gotta be careful is that when you turn it down and pull out, be careful not to turn it too far down because you don't wanna, uh, you don't wanna over, over stretch your, your cylinders, okay? So I'll turn it down just, just enough to um, you know, start digging it out. Um, I'm careful not to overwork the cylinders <coughs> if i see that um, um i stop being productive that way i'll go back to like just pushing into it okay so i'll talk to you all soon